So let's move across the desk. Uh, where Florence Villemino is there, ready Hi, to take us to the international press this time round. We're going to start off with those uh, with those crunch peace talks, really, in Munich. Uh, they managed to reach that deal. World powers. Uh, seeking a nationwide cessation of hostilities in Syria. That's right, and uh, mixed reactions uh, to that deal, as you can imagine. The New York Times is trying to be optimistic. Finally, some good news for the Syrian people. Uh, it's worth celebrating this chance to halt the brutality going on in Syria. This could be the first step to a longer road to peace. That being said, there are several reasons why the deal could be be derailed. First of all, uh, it doesn't include all combatants on the ground, including the Islamic State group, for instance, and perhaps even some rebel groups. And then there's the fact that the Russian president, of Vladimir Putin, has been playing a very duplicitous hand so far. Uh, and nothing says he'll actually stick to this deal. Uh, but for some reason, though, he seems to be showing some sympathy for the plight of ordinary Syrians, says the New York Times, even though he has been accused of bombing civilian areas in, in, around uh, Aleppo. This being said, it's an opportunity and we might as well take it. Well, there's other papers not quite as optimistic, are they, about this settlement and very much uh, not trusting Russia either. That's right. Simon Tisdall from The Guardian says that so far Russia has been running rings around the U.S. Uh, Russia says it's attacking rebel targets instead of ISIS targets because the U.S. is refusing to share its intelligence. But just like in Ukraine in 2014, Putin is actually changing the facts on the ground essentially to keep his opponents off balance. He's taking advantage of the situation, the fact that the U.S is very risk averse uh, to get involved in the situation. Uh, and so according to this article, the situation in Syria is Putin's game. And so far, he's winning. OK, well, Saudi Arabia now, they've decided to weigh in. They say they're ready to send ground troops into Syria. That's, That's a game right. changer. A very big game changer. The U.S. Defense Secretary Ash Carter says that this could be a good idea, but a lot of other papers a lot more uh, alarmed. You can see here uh, the opinion piece by uh, Patrick Coburn in The Independent. This is just a desperate last throw of the dice, and it's raising fears that powers across the region could get drawn into a bloody conflict without end in the region. Now, if you want to know a little bit more about Saudi Arabia's strategy on all this, you can head to Rai al Yum. that's a, a pan-Arab paper based in London. Uh, it says that essentially Saudi Arabia is seeing red right now in Syria. It spent the past five years arming the opposition, rallying the Arab wor world to its cause, uh, and all that is kind of slipping through its fingers right now. Uh, and, and instead, uh, Assad and uh, his backers, essentially Iran, are gaining a lot of influence in in the region and Saudi Arabia is losing influence in the region. And so that's why it's it's waving around this threat of a military intervention. This article says that's unlikely to happen, but it is a ruse to kind of reach a, a diplomatic solution. OK, well, let's move on to another story that's getting a lot of attention this morning. Of course, Pope Francis and the Patriarch Kirill set to make Christian history when they meet in Cuba. That's right. They're going to cross paths in Havana. That's according to Grandma, the, uh, the main paper in Cuba. Uh, it's the very first meeting between a Catholic Pope and a patriarch of the Russian Orthodox Church since, get ready for it, 1054, so quite a long time ago. That was when the Christian church split into West and East over issues of papal authority and the source of the Holy Spirit, so some pretty big issues. Now, this is a big deal, this meeting between uh, the two, but what's interesting is if you go to the Observatorio Romano, that is the official Vatican paper, you have to go all the way back to page 8 to read about this, uh, this meeting. But what's interesting is it's Pope Francis who's really been pushing for this meeting, why is it happening now? Well, essentially growing violence against Christians in the Middle East, particularly uh, persecution by the Islamic State group. And that was compelling enough to persuade Kirillie to agree to this meeting. OK, let's finish up with a word on astrophysics, of all things. Uh, for <laughs> decades, scientists have been searching for something called gravitational waves, and they finally found them. That's right. I know you're excited about this one. I am. <laughs> I love this story. I just wish I could understand, understand it. it. Me too. I'm going to try to explain it as best <laughs> as I can. So these are gravitational waves, uh, and scientists are excited that they have been found. You can see here, it's at the very front page of The Independent, the theory of relativity proved. Now, yesterday it was revealed that these gravitational waves had finally been detected. A team of physicists recorded the sound of two black holes colliding uh, billion, a billion light years uh, away. Uh, so this was first predicted by Albert Einstein in 1915, so just over 100 years ago. You can see here The Guardian saying, so it turns out Einstein was right all along. What in the world are these gravitational waves? 
It's kind of like throwing a rock into a pond. That's the best uh, explanation I've seen so far. It sends waves throughout the cosmos. But if you want a real explanation uh, about gravitational waves and black holes, uh, check out the uh, New York Times today. They have an Earthling's gu gu Guide to Black Holes. Very useful, very interesting with these really impressive uh, graphic images. Uh, and uh, according to a lot of papers, this is really a revolution, this mm. discovery of these gravitational waves. The consequences for our understanding of the universe are out of this world. That's something I read in the papers. And let's just end with a, a cartoon in the New York Times, which is, which is taking a funny take on this. You can see this couple watching TV. Scientists have heard the sound of two colliding black holes no, it's not the Republican primary. Gosh, many people wish they could send some of the candidates into those black holes, don't they? But it's certainly wonderful stuff. Very big news indeed. Do you think this is going to make sure we can do time travel on these things? Is I, this in the distant I'm horizon? Definitely, I'm definitely hoping so. We're we'll, keeping we'll come our back and have this crossed. conversation again. <laughs> we'll keep our fingers crossed for that. Thanks very much, Thomas Villemano, with the press review this morning. William Hill.